Hi, in this video I'm going to describe changing the air conditioning condenser on this 2006 Aston Martin DB9. I haven't done any videos on the DB9 before because I don't tend to do many jobs on it. Um, but since I was quoted two hours of labour, which is something like £300 to change the condenser when the car was in for a service recently, I decided to have a go at it myself. When it was in for a service, I had them um, evacuate the system. So you can't do that yourself unless you've got the right tools. So that was done. And then from reading the instructions, it said should disconnect the battery and drain the coolant system. I couldn't see any reason to drain the coolant system. Um, I've actually finished the, the job when I'm recording this now. Um, so there is no, no reason to do that. I also didn't disconnect the battery. It's never a bad idea to disconnect the battery when working on a car. Although we're not touching any electrical connections, we are quite close to the positive terminal here but it's never actually exposed at any point. So up to you, your car, your safety, you make the decision on that, but I didn't do it. The only tools required for doing this job are either a wide screwdriver or a Torx T30 bit to remove all of the bolts around the slam panel, then a 10 millimeter spanner and an eight millimeter deep socket in terms of the parts required, I just bought the condenser and the two O-rings which go with it. I got them direct from Aston Martin. Cost me just under £400 for those. But as I say, I was quoted something like £800 or something to have this job done. It can be completed easily in a couple of hours. I've never done it before, but as you'll see, it is a very, very simple process. One of the easier cars to work on for this job. So certainly nothing to be afraid of. So the first job to do is to remove this large slam panel here. All that you need to do to do that is to undo all of these bolts around the edge, along the top and down the side, and then the panel just lifts out. If you lift it up from, from the front, then you'll get it around this positive terminal here. And once that's out of the way, we'll be able to see the condenser and the radiator. With the cover removed, we can now see the condenser and um, this is the new one I've taken it out um, taken the old one out and put the new one back in I did that because I've never done this job before so I wasn't quite sure what to do so in terms of explaining the procedure kind of had to do the job first but to get the old condenser out you have to undo these two bolts here so that's just with a M10 spanner on there and then there are two further bolts which actually hold the condenser in place. You can see one of them ahead, ahead of it there. So you have to go round round the back of here to get at that. Just using um, a long socket. That's an um, eight millimeter head on that. And then there's a similar bolt just there. And once those two are removed and it just lifts out, you can see the bracket at the bottom there, it just drops into a bracket to hold it in place. One of the harder parts is getting these these sections past here because there's not a lot of space so i found to do that if you get these sections moved out of the way and then push it all the way across as far as you can over this way and then that gives you just enough room to ease that past there once that's done it then just lifts out here is the new condenser lined up against the old one you can see even on this without using the UV light to highlight it, that there's a, a damp patch around here and another area around here. So the new condenser does look like the same size, same type. One thing I will have to do is to move these clips from the old one onto the new one. But what I'll do before that, I'll just turn the, the lights off in here and I shall use these um, black light and goggles just to, to show you how well it highlights the areas with the leaks. I've turned the lights off in the garage. So I've got the, the camera looking through the goggles so you can see very well how it highlights the areas where there's leaks. There's little spots in various areas along here, but you can see there's a very, very large area across there on the right hand side. There's clearly another, another small leak around there and a larger leak over there as well. 
So that's obviously why this condenser has failed. So now time to get the new one fitted. Before fitting the new condenser, I'm going to change the two O-rings. So there's a smaller one here and a large one here. So I'll just remove those and then fit the new ones. You'll notice I'm keeping this bolt in for when I put the new condenser in and this one removed. So the O-rings come as a pack of two. So there they are. And then when I've put them on, I'm going to lubricate them just with a, a small amount of oil for air conditioning systems. This is just so that they don't um, they don't bind when they go into the condenser, so that they fit in smoothly. The condenser out of the way, you can more easily see the brackets. So these are the bottom ones. So this is where it just drops into here, and then. At the top, the clip sits behind this top one and the bolt goes in from the front. Obviously that's the, the same on both sides, although on this side it is a little bit more difficult to get at the one at the back, that's why we do it from the back. So here you can see I've put the new O-rings on, they've now got the, the oil on them, so I'm going to drop the new condenser in. I've now dropped the new condenser into place see the clips placed on here um, it was a bit awkward getting it in same as it was to get it out so I found it easier to put this side in first and then slide it all the way across so that this tang here can go under here that was the hardest part and then also if you look down there you'll see there's another um, there's basically another section for a bracket just there so we, it wanted to fit onto there, so I had to get my hand down the back and basically push it out to make sure that it goes onto the, the lower bracket. You can see it down there. So that's the, the correct one for it to be fitting on. And then on this side, you can see it's, it's in place on there, ready to go behind the bracket. So before I um, clamp it into place with the bolts, I'm going to remove these covers and get the the uh, inlet and outlet pipes connected. I've got the first bolt in. You can just see the, the head of it in there. So to, to get that in, I basically used a, a long socket like this with the, the bolt in and then just go in around around the back of there. It was quite fiddly, was quite fiddly to get in. By far the, the hardest part of the job, definitely. So all that remains now is to put the second bolt in here and then to screw the cover back on. Now back in place and tightened up. So that's that's all of those done. So all that remains now is to have the system vacuum checked and recharged. And then it uh, hopefully will be good to go for another 14 years. Hope that was useful. Thanks for watching. If you've got any uh, questions or comments, please put them below. Thank you.